Good morning, my friends. Welcome to today's training. I'm Marshall Berkshire, and I help codependents rediscover happiness, well-being, satisfaction, joy in their lives after narcissistic abuse. And today, we're going to have another blunt cake episode. This is episode number 12. It is about what you want, not if you could do a thing. So before we get into that, I need to share this out to the community. The community is your safe haven where you can find tools, guidance, and support in your journey, thriving beyond codependency, actually becoming more of who you are, living, know, knowing, loving, and living who you are really is what we do there. We get you tools, we get you support, we get you insights, guidance in your journey beyond trauma bonds, Beyond the, beyond the codependency, beyond the enmeshment and the dependency we have on others, come into our own sovereignty, our own autonomy. Be free. So you can find that link above on Facebook, below on YouTube. And if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Good morning, Laura. It's nice to see you. Let's see. Let's share to a group. Share to the right group. And it's going to clicky, clicky. So, all right. So hopefully the transmission's going good and smoothish. Next week we'll have different service and hopefully that helps <laughs> the transmission fun. Okay, so it's not about if you could, it's about what you want. So in codependency, we tend to orient ourselves around if we could. Do I have the resource? Do I have the capacity? Can I do that? We compel ourselves to do something, whether it's tolerate something we don't like, tolerate someone we don't like, tolerate a situation that isn't working for us, or tolerate moving beyond what we're comfortable with, what, what we want to deal with in that moment. Um, we aren't actually attuning to ourselves. We are tuning to the belief that we are the one that needs to meet the expectation, the desire, the need or want that the other person uh, either says they have or is demonstrating that they have. We assume that we're responsible for it. We, re we assume that they don't have other resources or that they can't make it work themselves, that they can't figure or solve, out, solve their, their need themselves. So we kind of get enmeshed in responsibility for them. So let me know in the comments below if this is something that you're dealing with and what that's like for you. Because for me, it, it used to cause me an intense amount of anxiety and fear. Because if I didn't meet their need or if I didn't do what I could do, would they love me? Would they keep me around? Would they value me? Would I be able to keep this connection? Because I was really driven from the, the fear of lack, the fear of loss, the fear of not being included, not being kept. Uh, because I was used to what's called transactional relating or benefit-centered relationships where relationships are built around getting something and then they don't exist beyond that. It's, it's a transaction. It's much like going to the store and buying something. You give them the dollar, they give you the donut. It's done. Benefit-centered relating or transactional relationships function that way. I had no relationship to what's called connection-centered relating, which is where we are valued for who we are. We're valued for what we contribute. We value, we are valued and respected for what we contribute, but we are valued and respected for who we are first. They care about our well-being. They care about our capacity, where we're at in our world. They're not trying to get something from us. They, they want to, to be in our presence. We want them to be in our presence. There's a sense of warmth, connection, respect, and appreciation involved both for who we are and what we do so connection centered relationships have a component of of transactions in the meaning that we exchange things or that there's certain things we do well um, and that they do well that we find appealing and attractive but it moves beyond that benefit into the larger context of being connected and seeing and and valuing who we are and what we're going through and what we're feeling so we enjoy the person and we are enjoyed for who we are this is key 
this is the underlying thing here because when we think hey i could do this i guess i have to we are bypassing connection with ourself we're moving into a transaction with ourself and with that person and this is going to lead to resentment it's going to lead to burnout it's going to lead to confusion of boundaries it's going to lead to crossing boundaries maybe enmeshment um, it can lead to interfering with someone else's um, growth because we might be inadvertently enabling them by trying to solve their problem for them or believing that we're the only resource they can depend on when they can actually because they're an adult go out and find other resources we are not obligated to meet other people's requests needs or wants we live my my approach to relationship is built on consent not obligation and entitlements so it's consent and privilege so no one's entitled to my resources no one's entitled to your resources resources include your time your body your energy your capacities your talents your um, skills your insights no one's entitled to these things um, what what really happens is if somebody like if i want something from person a i ask I turn my desire into an ask and I make a request and I see what happens. That way we're building consent. And from consent, we can build connection, we can build trust, we can build understanding, we can build that warmth of like, I value who you are. I care about you. Rather than, hey, thanks for the cookie, I'm out. Same. But if we're coming, so when we look at a request from someone, it's not whether or not you could do it. And this is the blunt cake part. It's whether or not you want to do it. Because that want is an internal consent. It's part of you going, yeah, I want to do that. That that makes sense to me. I can value that. This, this is something I willingly want to contribute. So you're getting your own consent from yourself to say yes to the to the request outside yourself. That says a huge act of self-respect, self-attunement, self-love. It's like but I don't want to. Well, then say no. Because no is just, it's a valid boundary. It's a valid response. And since no one's entitled to anything from you, at least no other adult is, then they get to live with it. They'll have to deal with it. They'll have to grow up. That's kind of the, the rub here, is that when we say no, the other person's empowered to find other resources for themselves, other connections, and, and grow their own uh, self-resourcing and co-resourcing, uh, co-regulation with others. We're not in inherently like the one responsible for something if somebody asks us of it or we become aware of it. That it's always th their responsibility. So Laura asks, what about the fear or feeling of being unacknowledged by the closest people around you? The fear. All right, so you have two things going on there, Laura. So first, the fear is a, a, a projection onto the future. It's like, oh, what if this happens? So that, that's, that speaks to something you've gone through in the past that was really painful. And that place deserves acknowledgement, legitimization, and integration so you can feel empowered and cared for, seen and nurtured in that. The second component, feeling of being unacknowledged by the closest people around you, that speaks to to a current experience going on and whether or not you are feeling seen valued and loved you might need some reassurance there you might need um an opportunity to slow down and say hey am i what what do i need and what do i need to ask for what do i want here and then start asking for it and then maybe even push a little and say hey you know i kind of feel unseen right now and i, I want to feel seen because i care i know I care about us. I care about you, and I, and I just want to feel closer to you. I want I want to enjoy our connection, and our our love, and our relationship. And so I want I, I want to to be closer with you. And here's how you can do that. Hey, um, you know, point out when I'm doing something you really like. Share with me what you f how you feel about how I'm showing up in your world. That can help you get acknowledgement and presence uh, from others. We're not accusing them of anything. We're not making them wrong. We're not making ourselves wrong. Instead, we're, we're, we're expressing what we would like to have more of with that person. And that tends to go over pretty well. 
So that's an option there for you there, Laura. So when it comes to doing things, it comes down to want, not could or should or must or have to. Coulds, shoulds, musts, and have tos are programmed statements, meaning somebody at some time told you that that's the way the world works and then you agreed to it and made that like an internal law unto yourself. Now you get to move back to becoming back to your own personal sovereignty and authority over your yard and your world and say, is that what I want? And if the answer is no, then you don't have to do it. Well, you don't have to do it even if you want to do it. You get to consent to do it. The reason I'm pushing on this is because we tend to do, from codependency, we tend to do a lot of things because we could do them, not because we want to do them. And then we burn out. We feel empty. We feel unsatisfied. We feel frustrated. We feel lost in what we want. It's because we're not doing what we want. If we're going to have more satisfaction in our lives, more happiness in our lives, we have to do more of the things we want rather than the things we could or should. We have to build into our own consent and go, yeah, I want to do this. This brings me joy. Let's do it. Let's see what happens here. The want matters more than the could, more than the should. The want's where your power is. It's where your brilliance is. It's where your authenticity is for you. So if you're encountering situations in your world where you're like, hmm, do I want to? Or I could do that. that that's not the thing you want to do there is ask yourself, do I want to? I know I could, but do I want to? And then let, let yourself have the permission to say, no, I, I don't want to. Admit to it. Be Build that honest relationship with yourself and say, I don't want to do this. I want to do that instead. Do something else. This gets you aligned with your own prosperity this gets you aligned with your own natural abundance. It gets you aligned with your own natural happiness. That's where we find our satisfaction. So that's the blunt cake for today, my friends. You're very welcome, Laura. <sighs> so yeah, jump out there, play with this. Start choosing more of your wants over your coulds and shoulds. And let's see what you discover out there. So thank you again for being here. Remember that you're worth knowing, loving, and keeping. And uh, last little bit here, if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Share this video out, guys. To people you know would benefit from it. Thank you for your support, for your feedback, for letting me know the impact my work is having in your world because that's something that I want. So I ask for more of that. I appreciate what you've given me. It means a lot to me to know that what I do makes a difference, especially in the world of codependence. Those of us struggling with trauma bond, love addiction, uh, narcissistic abuse, neglect, things like that because <laughs> I lived through it and one of my passions is helping you guys discover that you don't have to live through it anymore that you can have friendships and relationships and a life that you really enjoy li living and satisfaction and happiness and pursuing the things that speak to you and light you up so there we go thank you you guys have a safe uh, holiday weekend I'll see you guys next week and have a great day